So we originally talked about the fact that we had copied all these application forms into our applications form subdirectory. And we then started to fill them out. And the very first one that we did was our application form. And we also um, talked about having an, an index. So what I'd like to do is bring up a copy of the index page. So I like to create one of these because it helps me organize all this information. So in this case, um, what I do is have item numbers in the order that I'm creating this stuff. So I've got my grant application being item one, my budget detail being item two, my authorization form being item three, my good standing certificate would be item four if I needed it. But in this case, I just made a notation that it's already on file at New Hampshire Bureau of Trails. So I don't really need to provide that as part of this application. Item four is my project permission for public land. Item five is my NHB review letter. Item six is my trails permit, my SPN permit. Item seven is my work area map. Item eight is my work area photos. Item nine is my club map. Item 10 is my lumber quote uh, for my culvert. Item 11 is a clay gravel quote. Item 12 and items 12, 13, and 14 are quotes for the um, the um, equipment rental. And I made a note that uh, MG Excavation was the low bidder, uh, and they can see that if they look at these three quotes. So some of these I've noted require two hard copies. So that's the NHB review letter, the project work area map, and the pro project work area photos, and the club map with uh, work area denoted. So anybody have any questions on this little index page? Okay, so we've already completed the grant application. So we've, we've completed items one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We didn't do anything with the quotes and I'm not really planning on doing anything with the quotes. Uh, at this point, because this is kind of a fake project, so I'm not going to be supplying quotes. Um, so the one thing that we need to get finished is the budget details spreadsheet. So that's what we're going to go into next. So the best part about this budget details spreadsheet is that you already have created your own grant summary spreadsheet that has all the information that's needed in this budget detail. What I'm gonna try and do is get this to be a little bit bigger so you guys can see it a little easier. Okay, so we're gonna start out with the club name and the project name. And then the first category that they have in this spreadsheet is volunteer labor. So, you know, I had filled out in uh, in my prior spreadsheet a bunch of things that I thought I needed to do for this project. So basically, I just went down through that list, typed in a description here. So transport grass seed, it's going to be done by one person, and there's a total number of hours, one hour to do this task. The the rate hourly rate twenty eight eighty four is the same as last year. And I got this rate from the instructions. So when you, uh, when we first downloaded all the forms from the Bureau of Trails website, one of the other things that I downloaded was the instruction sheet. And I, in, I looked up the 
hourly rate on that instruction sheet. Uh, spreading grass seed, there's two people, two hours each. And so you got to put the total hours of four. This does not work the same as the uh, grant summary spreadsheet where you put in the number of people, the number of hours, and then it automatically totals it for you. In this case, you put in the number of people and the total number of hours you're going to spend on that task for both people. So two people times two hours equals four. Transport hay bales, two people, two hours equals four. Install hay bales, two people, two hours equals four. Transport culvert to trail, two people, two hours, four. Assist with culvert install, one person, one hour total. So then you put in your hourly rate and it is going to total up for you what the total value of your volunteer hours is. Now, the next step is to determine uh, whether it's requested from RTP, pledged as a hard match or pledged as a soft match. So for volunteer labor, the only thing you can do is pledge it as a match. And uh, I've been told to use this hard match column for everything. I'm really not sure what soft match is used for, but um, instructions are to use this column, so that's what I've done. Next category is equipment rental. Um, we have the excavator, the bulldozer, and the vibrating roller. They all include operators. And I just pulled over the number of hours and the rate from my um, grant uh, spreadsheet that we, we already created. So in this case, 71 hours, $182 per hour, 36 hours, $156 an hour, and 13 hours at 116 per hour. Now, again, we've already gone through figuring out which part of this project we wanted to have funded from RTP and which part we wanted funded from our GIA. So, you know, I just went to my summary sheet and um, put, in, put in that all this equip, uh, the, uh, equipment rental is going to be paid for in the, by RTP. But you notice that I have 2882 off to the side here. And the reason for that is uh, because I wanted my grant to come out to an even number. And in order to get it to come out to an even number, I had to take 2882 out. So I'll show you this in a second, uh, a little further down here. Um, materials, I've got a culvert, clay gravel, conservation, mixed grass seed, and hay bales. Again, I put in my quantity and cost for each of these thing, each of these items, and then um, I just I went back to my summary on my my grant spreadsheet that I, we had already created, and figured out how much um, was going to be allocated to RTP and how much was going to be our allocated taken care of by GIA, and so I've got. 15,982, 82 taken care of from RTP, and the rest is going to be taken care of by GIA. So in our third class, when we created our grant management spreadsheet, um, we talked a little bit about the fact that we are estimating uh, gravel, lo gravel in loads, but it would have to be converted to yards uh, before it was entered into the uh, grant applications. So I'd like to go through uh, what that process is. It's really pretty straightforward. Um, so in our grant management spreadsheet, uh, we had clay gravel estimated in 14 yard loads for the price of $340 per load. 
and that included delivery. Um, you, you need to, when you get your quotes, you need to make sure that delivery is not put as a separate line item. Uh, otherwise, it will cause issues uh, when you try and uh, recover that, um, get reimbursed from the Trails Bureau. So we've got $340 per 14-yard load. And what we need to do is convert that to the total yards and the price per yard. So we're going to divide the, the price of 340 by 14, which gives us a per yard price of $24 and then a fractional number of cents, 28571 We're going to round that up to 2429 per yard. So on the summary page of our grant management spreadsheet, um, this was the clay gravel allocation between RTP and GIA. We had uh, $15,980 uh, for RTP, allocated for RTP, and we had $8,160 allocated for uh, GIA. So what we want to do now is convert those allocations from loads to yards. So we're going to divide the 15980 by $340 per load, and that gives us 47 loads. Now multiply 47 loads times 14 yards, and that equals 658 yards. Um, to do the... Um, we then want to multiply 658 yards by 2429, which is our per yard price, and we get a total of 15,982.82. So that's the number that we're going to put into our uh, RTP budget spreadsheet. As you can see, it's just a little bit higher than the 15,980 that we had in our grant summary spreadsheet. We need to perform the exact same calculation for the GIA allocation. So we're going to take the $8,160, um, divide that by 340, gives us 24 loads. 24 loads times 14 yards gives us 336 yards. And then multiply 336 yards by 2429 per yard gives us a total of $8,161.44. And again, you'll see that's just slightly higher than the 8160 that we had in our grant management spreadsheet. So now um, we want to put those figures into our RTP budget spreadsheet. And you can see under clay gravel, I've got a grand total of 900 and 94 yards times 24.29 per yard gives me 24,144.26. And that's compared to 24,140 that we had in our grant management spreadsheet. And then we're allocating 15,982.82 to RTP and the balance of 8,161.44 gets allocated as, as the match. We don't have any service contracts. We don't have any planning and design. We don't have any environmental permits. We don't have any equipment purchases and there are no other items. So if we look down at the bottom line here, we can see that 100% of our project cost is $45,694.38. Our RTP request is 36,000 even. Remember I told you they like even numbers. So when I first added this up, it was 36,000, uh, 20, 36,000, 
So in order for me to get this to be an even number, I had the club pick up $28.82 of the of of um my equipment rental and that dropped me down to the 36,000 my nice even number. And then this is my RTP match um and you know will be paid for by a GIA grant. Um so if you take a look down here at the bottom line, this is calculated by them. If we take the 45,694.38, multiply it times 80%, that's how much we are able to uh, get in RTP funds. In order to match, we need a minimum of 9,000. And you can see that we've got 9,694.38 pledged as a match. Now that includes the GIA money and it also includes our volunteer hours. So you can see we're, you know, we're, we're well over what, what's needed. Okay. Um, there's a few things down here you need to realize. You can only have one application per project and two applications per organization. So what that means is, you know, um, if you got the same trail name, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff along that trail. If you have two different trails, those are each each trail would be considered a separate project. So if you want to do two trails, you can do it. You have to file two different sep two different applications. Eighty thousand dollars is the maximum request per organization. So if you got two projects, you could do forty each. Uh, you could do uh, sixty and twenty. Uh, just depends on what your project is looking at. You need an eight thousand dollar minimum. So you, you really need uh, that. What that means is $10,000 project to, in total. Um, yeah, that's it. Category G does not apply to us. Okay. Any questions on the budget, the RTP budget detail spreadsheet? Larry, can you use your um, the time that you have to put together the grant as a match? Can you be as labor or as you know contracted labor? No, no. So and it's it, it's all volunteer. There's no correct. You can't put your time in there for that as a, like a match. No, no. The problem correct. is that they don't recognize anything that's done ahead of time. So, in other words, if you have to do let's say some tree clearing in advance. Um, you know, the club eats that. If you gotta do, go out and do research work, you gotta go out, take pictures, you gotta go out and GPS the thing, all that's done in advance. So none of that counts. Only the volunteer work that's done after your grant start date can be counted. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. So at this point, we I think we've covered everything that's needed for this grant. So what I what I went and did in my four BOT folder. What I did was I copied in all these different PDF files that um, were needed and the and the grant budget detail, the RTP budget detail spreadsheet. And I named them according to my grant index. So um, let me pull up my grant index.
So if you look in the grant index, my um, I put my grant index as zero zero. Then I put in my grant application as zero one. My budget detail is zero two. Project administrator authorization form zero three. Project permission form zero four. Data check review letter zero five. DES trails SPN forms. 06, project work area map 07, project work area photos 08, and club map with the work area in it 09. And so it's really easy as, as I'm cre creating these documents to, to see if I left anything out. So this is the system that I use to track all this. And I've had up to 29, 30 attachments on some of my grants. So, you know, the more complicated your grant, the more stuff you're providing, uh, it gets pretty crazy trying to keep track of all these files. So this is how I've chosen to do it, is by creating this grant index and then naming the files beginning with the two digit number. So it's really easy to make sure I didn't miss anything. Does everybody understand that? Yep. Okay. So um, the next step is to print all this out. And we talked about how you need multiple copies of some things. So you're going to need, you know, a good printer and a color printer. And, you know, you want to print all this out, big stack of paper. And then what you're going to do is you're also going to get a USB and you're going to copy all these files here onto your USB and you're going to put that USB in the same envelope as your hard copy uh, and, you know, send it off to the Trails Bureau. So when you um, send the digital copy, there's no need to have duplicates, you know, where, you, where it says NHP review letter, you need two hard copies. You don't need two digital copies. You just need one digital copy of that. Um, so basically I just copy all this stuff onto the, onto the um, USB drive, pop it in the envelope, and that meets all the requirements of the grant. Just a quick note on that, Larry. Um, uh, you know, BOT may be accepting the, the uh, USB drive now but that is a known security risk that some of these institutions are not allowing any USBs to be used on their computers. So just a heads up, that may be coming down the pipe for, for them. Well, if, they, if they're going to do that, they need to have a portal that we can upload this information to. Yeah. Because, because emailing this amount of stuff, uh, you know, I don't know how many, well, it's actually not all that bad probably three or four, three or four meg there, but um, it, it's still um, impractical to email in my book, but um, that's how I've been doing it in the past. And, um, you know, if I find out something different, I'll let you guys know, but uh, that's how I've provided digital copies to them in the past. Yeah, I just wanted to, to give you guys a heads up on that. I know it at our hospital, USB drives have been completely banned. Okay. Well, we'll find out um, how they want to get it. But uh, that's basically how, how I've been doing it in the past. Any other questions, comments? Okay, so I've sent out your homework and your homework is to basically fill out an RTP grant and all the different um, attachments that go along with it. Um, I've provided detailed instructions and also provided you with samples on every, every one of these things. Um, is out there as a sample uh, attached to the homework assignment. So 
you know, if you have any questions, you're not sure how to fill something out, pull up the, the form, take a look at it, and uh, it should should be able to answer any questions. Um, again, if you need help with anything, I'm available to help you by email or phone. And, um, you know, looking forward to you guys being able to get through this process.